This is An Infinite Path, spoken word essays by Niles Heckman, some of which go on to become our documentary short subject films, half of which release freely here through the podcast, all of which can be found through your support at nilesheckman.com. This essay will be discussing the barbaric practice of male circumcision, which, if you've had done to you, was due to your father continuing the cycle of pain which was done to him. As you can tell from that statement, this will not have professional journalistic objectivity, nor will it be from the standpoint of a watch-what-I-say medical professional. But instead, as someone who is quite passionate about this issue because of being constantly mind-boggled as to how many people still are so ignorant to this practice— by knowing the benefits of never having part of my dick cut off, and also having a wife who is in the field of obstetrics and gynecology who occasionally has direct unhappy stories regarding this subject because her partner in her practice sadly placates to it, bearing witness to the screams of freshly circumcised babies which are like nothing you've ever heard. Welcome to the 3D realm, newborn. Ha ha ha! So, what does this particular topic have to do with the overlying theme of these essays? It's an issue of physical consciousness. Also, a deconstruction of one of the wrongs of religion's dogma through spiritual philosophic deconstruction. This is being penned and spoken on to raise awareness about because the amount of people who live in the United States, for example, who still think this is normal, not to mention acceptable to do to a child, is staggering. It's also extra good for the beautiful, feminine, divine ladies to hear because women don't, of course, have reference points on this and may have only had interaction with non-natural male genitalia and thus blindly follow their husbands in regards to making this decision for their own young newborn sons. This will also be the most X-rated reality tunnel essay to date. So if you have sensitive ears about things related to sexy time, slang about our anatomy, and detailed descriptions of how it works, definitely turn this off now. It will also hopefully inject some comedy interwoven as an attempt to bypass any conditioning systems. Some of it you might consider to be TMI, too much info, but we want to be specific and detailed to overstand the issue. It also may be a bit contentious and thus controversial because like your thoughts on abortion, both are very tied in with people's belief systems, otherwise known as their indoctrination systems. We do honor and respect the 10% of religion which, at its esoteric core, is beautiful and shares wonderful allegoric life stories. But the following will highlight some religious practices that go way too far up Cuckoo Creek. Male circumcision is the removal of the foreskin of the human penis. Most males throughout the world are not circumcised, with the exception of parts of the Middle East, Africa, Israel, and the United States, because this unnecessary practice stems primarily from Judaism and Muslim faiths and has had splash damage to other non-Jews and Muslims from the waves of those rocks dropped in the pond. In the last half century, the rates of it have been dropping as the species has become a bit more conscious to its horribleness. It is primarily an exclusively religious ritual, although it is actually quite rare in Mexico, for example, so Catholicism gets an extremely surprisingly warranted pat on the back for that. It has always been quite sparse in Europe and its past colonies, because they got through much of their holy warring many centuries ago, while the Middle East, Africa, Israel, and the United States are still a bit in the sandbox of maturity around low-resonant exoteric dogma running much of their politics and beliefs. For example, a woman named Paula White, a televangelist pastor from the state of Florida, doesn't know anything about spirituality and is the spiritual advisor to the current president of the United States. By the way, have you ever noticed that the word belief, which, much like alien, has lie in the middle of the word, as you are being told a lie? At the time of this writing, 2019, according to the false Roman calendar, as opposed to the lunisolar calendar, which follows both moon phases and the time of the solar year dating back to at least the 2nd century AD, and had to be banned by the Romans as it indicated obvious prior druidic practices— In America, there are still non-religious folks who also circumcise standard operating procedure. Most folks that are pro-circumcision don't even really know why, and if they think they do, it's based off ultra-weak and flawed superstitions. These opponents of untacked penises claim circumcision is done for numerous reasons, one of which is health and hygiene purposes. 
Back in the day, in the Dark Ages and into Victorian-era Europe, most people didn't shower much. Hygiene was not good. So women got heinous yeast infections, which stunk up the whole room, and guys would get this gross white cheese buildup in the foreskin of their dicks because they didn't shower for weeks on end. It's called schmegma. Both sexes often also had greasy long tails from the Crypt Keeper hair and would go days with poo caked on their buttholes and didn't change their underwear much. A classic example of hygiene misuse is when new settlers came over to rape and pillage the Americas. The Native Americans, who they backwardly called savages, were actually quite clean and the Europeans off the ships stunk hellishly awful. So smelling like the mentally ill homeless vagrant who might be seen hanging out at Venice Beach in Los Angeles today was somewhat standard operating procedure for many Europeans of the time. Whether 500 years ago or today, if a little male kid refuses to shower for about a week, there is a possibility of the milky, cheesy schmegma building up inside the foreskin. Wine and cheese with crackers, anyone? But that's essentially the male version of the common female yeast infection, and we are not advocating cutting off women's vagina levy for that, are we? So this hygiene argument might have made a shred of sense then, but regardless of time period or even the invention of soap in ancient Babylon and Egypt, one could always go jump in the lake or river to clean off. As hygiene has improved, all of these problems went away if one so chose to adopt daily cleaning to thus not have hippie stink. Yet bizarrely today, as most people shower regularly, there is still this urban misguided superstition that circumcision is important for hygiene. Saying you need to cut off foreskin for hygiene is so nonsensical, it's like saying you need to cut off your ears because of a small possibility of earwax buildup instead of just regular soap scrubbing and using of the occasional Q-tip. Another common ultra-weak argument in favor of non-intact circumcised penis is aesthetics. Now, not to sound like the sinister child traffickers who operate in the shadows of politics and entertainment who send out weird coded emails and tweets, but it's important to give some details for evolution of growth. Uncircumcised, prepubescent little boy penis does look weird. When a boy is a baby, the size of his dick to his body is really tiny, and the foreskin typically looks extra long, a bit like an anteater's nose, or the nose of the character from the 1980s American sitcom series Elf, with extra rolls of skin that hang down below the tiny shaft and thus look super wrinkly, almost like a penis with some sort of extra larval extension added. Since so many men in the United States in the baby boomer generation had been circumcised that they had gotten used to rarely seeing a penis the way nature made it, an 80s high school slang nickname for an intact uncircumcised penis would later become Alf Nose. The foreskin is a sheath that the head of the penis sits inside for protection against day-to-day activity. As a male gets older and hits puberty, it's no shock that his dick gets bigger, and the foreskin becomes less prominent. So even though most women think most dicks look weird regardless of being circumcised or uncircumcised, these comments around improved aesthetics become obsolete regardless when a boy becomes a man because his dick gets longer and his foreskin gets shorter because the two typically don't grow proportionally. As we know, everyone's physicality and geometry is a bit different. Dicks vary in size and foreskin can vary a bit in size as well. The soft, flaccid penis, your everyday to-and-fro positioning, of an uncircumcised male in day-to-day life typically looks like a circumcised one, with the head usually partially or fully visible, with only a minor remaining flap of skin covering the hat of the head. Removing the foreskin from a pediatric penis has much larger effects on the adult penis. Let's say we were watching the show Game of Thrones and we're all about full frontal nudity being in front of flaccid, full-grown man's penises. A cut and uncut crotch of two identically sized men would be very similar in terms of style, except intact penises have a nice flesh look from the head to the shaft, and unintact ones usually have a darker purple head. This is due to keratinization, a hardening similar to fingernails and hair, which causes the skin to be highly desensitized. So if you are circumcised, you have a much less sensitized head of your dick because it's been rubbing around inside your armor your whole life without its natural protective cover. One very common difference is the head of the intact penis will be soft and healthy looking, and the unintact circumcised one in a best case scenario will be dry and rigid and likely slightly bulgy looking around the head. In less than ideal circumcision operations, it will also perhaps have a discoloration scar on the shaft below the head, or in a botched circumcision, there is a floating bridge of skin that connects the head to the shaft or even a ringed canyon lumpy unevenness to the shaft, or in an absolute worst-case scenario, the complete loss of the organ. 
Just type botch circumcision into a non-safe search engine if you want to see photographic evidence of these staggeringly unfortunate events. As a dude gets aroused, which happens quite often, yes, and the penis becomes erect, the foreskin slides down the shaft and looks identical to an unintact circumcised one. However, the head can still be slid in and out of the foreskin. This is wonderful for masturbation. An intact penis can be masturbated very easily. An unintact circumcised one cannot and thus must use lubricants with the hand. There are larger spiritual implications on masturbation and the expulsion of the sexual energy. The serpent is an esoteric symbol of the inner kundalini energy, which can be transmuted if that energy is saved. But the 10,000 foot on masturbation, specifically male masturbation, is that it's perfectly healthy to a point. And like anything in life, if abused or overused through extensive animal lust, can be a detrimental process. It's no wonder the internet has made pornography so ubiquitous these days, where every teenager has exposure to it just a few clicks away with that tiny computer in their pants. What circumcision really is all about is a dulling of sexual gratification, but even more so a determinant to male masturbation from uptight and staunch religious zealots who in a grossly off-balance way advocate zero masturbation, claiming the practice is a complete sin. Foreskin has millions of sensitive nerve endings, more than any other part of the body. If you have a foreskin, all you have to do to jack off, squeeze one out, masturbate, etc., is pull your foreskin back and forth. No lube required. You also keep heightened sensitivity your whole life, so the process is easier and quicker than if you are masturbating circumcised. The foreskin is thus an important and functional body part, protecting the head of the penis from discomfort and injury and aiding in moisture and lubrication. Circumcision also diminishes sexual pleasure later in life. If you are circumcised, you are also desensitized, which carries over the possibility of being more difficult for your partner in sex. Since male foreskin acts as a moisture retention device for the female during intercourse, holding in wetness during the outward part of each sexual thrust. So it helps women stay wet longer and allows the male's advance to be more gentle. This is rather than the potential deep dick thrusting which likely more only benefits the male and can oftentimes be very painful for the female as her natural moistness is reduced and thus causes hard chafing. So if you're listening to this well cut and thinking, hey man, I've had no problems in my sex life with what you speak of, do you realize that your sex would feel even better if you had foreskin? Not to mention not living up to your masturbatorial capability. <laughs> so it's more or less like you won't ever be able to know what you're missing. If you're a father who has had your son cut, you have effectively made his life of potential wonderful balanced and infrequent masturbation not as grand. So cut off the tips of his fingertips while you're at it. Claims that circumcision prevents HIV have repeatedly been proven to be trivial. STDs in general are spread through the pineal opening or through infected skin contact, regardless of how much skin is there or if something is trapped in small rolls of skin. Only abstinence or safe sex, including the use of condoms, can prevent the spread of sexually transmitted diseases, some of which are the gifts that keep on giving. On this note, when you're in college and people are passing around those red party cups or the pot pipe or bong, think twice before you sip the thing or take a hit off that thing, as oral herpes can be transmitted by sharing a pipe, drink, or even a kiss. To focus a bit more on the Judaistic aspect of this, because Judaism is basically ground zero for this practice, we find its origin in the book of Genesis, just 17 chapters into the Torah. Abraham receives a strange command from God, you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. No reason given other than that. It will be a sign of eternal covenant between God and Abraham and all of his descendants. The text makes it clear that circumcision must occur on the eighth day of life and falls to every Jewish male, and no exception. Those who choose not to obey this command, continues their patriarchal God, will be cut off from the Jewish people for breaking this sacred agreement. Abraham, the same Abraham who later accepts God's command to take his son Isaac on a three-day camping trip and sacrifice him without asking a single question, nor does Abe ask any questions about circumcision himself and committing all the future generations to the same act. Not a single question. We, on the other hand, have plenty of questions, starting with why. According to Jewish law, 
which, like all Abrahamic religions, has some good things and some ridiculously immature and infantile things, the foreskin should be buried after a Brit Malah. The rite is considered of such importance that in the Orthodox communities, the body of an uncircumcised Jewish male will sometimes be circumcised before burial. They will literally circumcise a corpse. On the absolutely weirdest and even more bonkers than that front, and some of you know what's coming, there is a ritual within some Orthodox Jewish faiths where right after a baby is circumcised, the rabbi will take a sip of alcohol and literally blow the child briefly in a creepy mouth-raping child-fucking pedo sense for what they claim is a disinfectant by putting alcohol to the fresh wound. But why deliver it orally? Remember the gift that keeps on giving which we just mentioned? Oral herpes, which is, yes, incurable and with you for life? There have been cases of infants contracting herpes from their rabbis. So this ultra-crazy practice is a clear example of too much religion. And in some indigenous cultures, they do equally as weird things with young boys, which they also consider normal. So go figure. A teacher of mine once said, Does a God who has conceived and borne intimate witness to all manifestation and life throughout the vast multidimensional realms of ineffable splendor, over countless aeons, through infinite iterations of mind-boggling dynamic evolution, really care what individual human beings choose to eat, drink, wear, say, or believe, let alone what they choose to do with their genitals? I would suggest that the answer is no. God doesn't mind at all, not even a tiny little bit. My wife had a Jewish lesbian couple as patients, who you would think would be less old-fashioned and a bit more hip to new change and society software upgrades, yet they still had their son circumcised. To really put this in perspective, think about female circumcision, as most often practiced in Africa. How would you feel if a gay couple wanted to circumcise their daughter like they do in Africa with an unsanitary or even sanitary razor blade? One can compare the male foreskin as being the male equivalent to the female clitoris. So if you are cutting off your son's foreskin, you are also cutting off your daughter's clit. Every female is a woman on the outside and a male on the inside. Every male is a man on the outside and a woman on the inside. This is not only in terms of esoteric qualities and emotions, but does have physical aspects as well. Men have nipples, for example, which are not functional. Women's clitorises are basically a little female dick, and those vary in size, by the way, as a real hermaphrodite will likely have a vagina with, instead of a clit, a little micropenis. And men have a female clit in their butt, which is essentially their prostate. This is why gay men sometimes, oftentimes, enjoy anal sex because of the stimulation in that area of the prostate. It's also why apparently it feels better in the butt for dudes than it does for the gals. Aren't you glad you're learning this information? Also esoterically, the removal of the foreskin is the physical aspect of the male that is the inner and outer labia and the symbolic allegory of the divine feminine being removed, which happens from Judaism to Islam, which exoterically are, surprise, surprise, patriarchal. There are many physical reasons beyond this, such as keeping the illusion of an erect penis on the male from birth and to keep them sex-driven and thus expelling the fluids from the spine and brain to keep them from ever waking up as they spill their seed every chance they get. So the penis foreskin is the physical allegory of the divine feminine shorn from that being. It is a sacred act that binds our sons and daughters to the thousands of generations who preceded them, and the generations to follow. Patriarchal lies and a refusal of orthodoxy to admit that something from its past had been wrong, to acknowledge that, is to acknowledge that more of its shaky dogmas may be wrong as well. Freedom of religion is not freedom to ignore human rights. Whatever the rationale, forced removal of healthy genital tissue from any child, male or female, is unethical. Boys have the same rights as girls to an intact body, and to be spared this inhumane, unnecessary surgery which they were too young to consent to. Thus many who oppose the premature alteration of a child's genitals do so because they believe in universal human rights. Plastic surgery at a consenting age is a wonderful modern technological privilege from correcting damage from accidents and terrible injuries, scars, burns, etc. Doing it cosmetically is a slippery slope. If a young person's self-esteem is heavily hindered by jug ears, a large hooked nose, or a labiaplasty because the inner and outer folds of her vulva are so large her crotch bump creates a self-esteem issue around wearing her yoga pants, and a procedure can help with that, then fair enough, 
and there is still a place for the use of this technology cosmetically, especially if it helps a young adult have higher self-esteem about their physicality. But those who have had unnecessary or excessive plastic surgery are doing it because they are externally manifesting their internal mental damage and sickness. Just look at the face of the quote-unquote spiritual advisor mentioned earlier. Circumcision is basically no different. All children, regardless of their ethnicity or culture, have the right to be protected from bodily harm and cutting off a baby's genitals creates immediate health risks. There is no link between circumcision and better health, and there is no reason to cut anything off from a newborn other than the umbilical cord, or let it fall off naturally for that matter. Call this what you want, a rant, a soapbox, a preach, a high horse, if this has done an even so slight part to help make inquisitive minds think more and thus hopefully be able to feel a little bit more, then it's helping those with ears to hear. Do please stop this cycle if this was done to you, as there is nothing more wonderful than a man who is circumcised choosing to not carry that on to his own sons.